to Atlanta, where a police officer and sergeant have been suspended pending an investigation after cell phone video surfaced showing the sergeant kicking a woman in the head. BNC's Iona Crystal has the latest. We can't trust them because they're doing things like this. This video went viral on Monday, showing a woman laying on her stomach with her hands behind her back in handcuffs, while two Atlanta police officers stand near her. At one point, the woman in custody raises her head and the male sergeant kicks her. Witnesses who shot the video did not want to be identified, but were shocked this happened. First of all, you're an officer and you know the law, and you're not supposed to put your feet on anybody. Your feet belong on the ground. So when I seen that, and plus like, kids, my kids was watching as well. So they was like, they were shocked. And they was like, if the police doing it to us, like, who do we supposed to have to protect us? Police were called to the Summer Hill Atlanta neighborhood after a 911 caller said a woman was walking in the area pointing a gun at several people. APD says when officers arrived, they detained the woman, but officers became concerned with her mental health. I know she tried to spit on the officer and that's when he took upon himself and kicked her in the face. And then after that, um, they was tussling with her trying to get her up and they realized they couldn't pick her up. So the officer actually kicked her down the hill and she went rolling. And they left Ashley outside, like with her breast out, for like 30 minutes before they decided to hip her out, hip her up. This video once again highlights why there's so much mistrust of police in communities of color. Here to weigh in is retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Uh, glad to have you back with us, Sergeant Dorsey. Thanks for having me. Your thoughts after watching this video of a sergeant kicking this woman who was on the ground handcuffed in the head? Well, listen, I was appalled. I mean, I'm a supervisor. And so, you know, we aren't expected uh, to comport ourselves that way, particularly um, in, in front of a subordinate. Uh, I, I understand mm -hmm. that, you know, this female officer stood by and acquiesced misconduct, probably because she was fearful of uh, reprimanding her supervisor. What sort of message and, and and image is he setting for those young officers who were there. Um, he's there to manage and control this situation. And, and he really did a piss poor um, attempt at, at supervising and managing, taking this lady into, contest, into custody. Now, this woman reportedly suffered from mental health issues and the officers involved were actually familiar with her. Do we need to get more specific mental health training for officers or find ways to get mental health experts to respond to cases like this? Well, I think it would be helpful if you have the, the uh, um, time to have a health care clinician respond, but we don't always have uh, that kind of um, ability to freeze frame and, and have a clinician come out. And so, you know, folks always want to make this a training issue. And it's not a training issue to my mind. This is how this supervisor gets down. This is what he does. He did it so effortlessly. Given, uh, you know, the times that we live in, all of them should have recognized that somewhere somebody was probably recording this. I don't know if they wear body cam, but they weren't bothered. Why? Because great deference is given to an officer's version. And we saw a felony being committed in our presence. When you kick somebody with a shoed foot, that's assault with a deadly weapon. And so I'm glad that they've mm -hmm. been taken out of patrol and I'm understanding that there's gonna be an administrative hearing and maybe a termination. I hope there's not a rush to judgment. The officers are given their due process so that we don't have a repeat of the Jacob Blake situation where uh, the officer who shot him in the back seven times was given his job back because of some administrative faux pas. Now, the woman in the video alleg allegedly spat on the sergeant's feet before he kicked her in the face. Now, I get it, right? Being an officer isn't easy, and it comes with a level of stress that regular civilians like, like me don't have to endure on a daily basis. But there's also an expectation we have of officers who decided on this line of work, so they understand what the job comes with. Are officers trained in ways that equip them with the tools uh, to deal with these sorts of things? Like, what was the appropriate response in that moment? Well, I would like to think that they've received the uh, proper training in, in ways in which to deal with people who are uncooperative, combative, profane, and in this instance, someone who would spit on you. I've had someone spit on me uh, on duty. It's inherent 
to what we do as police officers. And so you're not supposed to take this stuff personal. And I think this is what we see here. We see officers who are drunk with power, who probably punish people regularly when they don't follow their orders or they do something that they find offensive. And even though she spit on this officer's foot, his shoe, his boot, something he walks around on the ground with, she's in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what anybody does. Once the cuffs go on, no physicality from a police officer should occur. And what we've seen in, you know, the Derek Chauvin trial and those other officers who, who stood by and just idly watched this man press his knee into George Floyd's neck, what should have been the response by the other officer who watched her superior kick this woman in the head? A good partner would step in and say, hey, that's enough. You know, when you have someone who's in custody, when you have someone who's handcuffed and you see other officers starting to join in and pile on and want to inflict more pain, if you will, a good partner would say, hey, that's enough. Let me take it from here. And on top of that, a female officer, a black woman sees a black man kick another woman in the face and you don't step in. This makes me think this is how these officers comport themselves regularly. And then you see another black officer. He's just kind of milling around. He's seeing what's going on and nobody mm -hmm. is interjecting. We've always had a duty to intervene. And so they should have done that in this instance. Everyone there who did not stop this is culpable and is equally as guilty as the offending supervisor who kicked this woman. And what was really telling is the reaction. There was no shock. So it makes you wonder how often this is done. Um, now, we often think of police brutality in terms of a white officer, black victim, but just as often the officer is black, as in this case. Can you speak to me about how race plays a role and why this is still about racism? Well, see, I think, you know, I can take race out of it because I think these are officers who are drunk with power. They're used to exerting their authority. They're used to treating people any kind of way that they want to because at the end of the day, when they give a version, and now you've got a sergeant who's going to go to a lieutenant, the watch commander, and talk about this incident. And of course, great deference is going to be given to what a, an officer says. And then you have a supervisor who was there managing this woman's uh, detention, if you will. Of course, a lieutenant is going to side with the version given by this sergeant. And then you have the officers who are probably too fearful to say anything based on his rank. It's problematic for me. And I think that this is how these officers comport themselves regularly. They did it with ease and without any regard for anyone watching and saying anything to the contrary. Now, this incident happened in one of Atlanta's oldest historically black neighborhoods. Now, setting this case specifically aside, what does that say about how black officers view our communities in general? Well, it says what all officers uh, seem to, how all officers seem to view our community. You don't see these kind of atrocities occurring in affluent neighborhoods. Why? Well, because uh, they'll report it <laughs> and they'll be believed. And, and black folks tend to think nobody's going to believe me. Why even report it? And I think that if you look uh, on, on a large scale where these kinds of uh, outrageous, egregious, unnecessary uses of force occur, it's always in an area where there are people who maybe um, are less than or viewed less than who aren't able to articulate uh, perhaps as well as others about the type of force and service they're receiving. And so the, these officers live to offend again. You kick somebody, they complain, they get thrown out of the office. Uh, the next time they don't complain. And so these officers just do and do and do until it makes national news. And so this is not the first time. Mm -hmm. I hope it's the last. Well, that actually brings me to my next question. Both officers are now off the streets. The sergeant has been suspended without pay and the officer has been reassigned to desk duty. Is that enough? And what are you going to be looking for as this investigation proceeds? Well, it's not enough. They need to be fired, but they have to be given their due process. And I hope administratively they don't cut any corners so that in the event there is a termination, they're not given their job back on appeal. We'll have to wait and see. But listen, again, officers don't start off this way. And working patrol is not a right. I would imagine if we had an opportunity to look in their personnel package, that you would probably see similar activities, similar complaints, and nothing was ever done. It was either minimized and mitigated, and thus these officers were given a wink and a nod in the belief that it's okay to comport yourself this way in certain parts of the city. 
Now, the witness who recorded this video said her kids were with her watching this all unfold. They told her, quote, if the police are doing this to us, who are we supposed to have protect us? Uh, Sergeant Dorsey, how is that mom supposed to respond? Well, listen, I mean, you just tell your children the same thing. I, I would imagine she's telling her children the same thing I, I've told mine, is that you you do the best you can, you, you comply with an officer's request, and it doesn't always mean that you're going to leave them the same way they found you. Uh, you. You create a paper trail, you complain, you know, as a parent, you come to me, you let me resolve these issues, let me have this fight for you, and hopefully you live uh, and survive that police encounter, but this does nothing to um, bridge the gap that currently exists between community and police when you see officers conduct and comport themselves the way these two just did. All right, retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey, thank you so much for your time tonight.